2008, it appears to be a steady, steady amount of searches. Uh, and I compared it to like stuff like Flex and, and, and other languages. And it, it used to have like with Flex, it was from 2007 it went up, and then it went came down hill from there. So, so we kind of using this metric because I don't have any others. Uh, it looks like we're not getting uh, many more searches for hacks for some reason. And uh, well, the question is why? Because uh, obviously, uh, uh, it's really the language is getting better uh, from what we also see. Uh, and there are some reasons that I think hacks should be getting more popularity. I mean, one is uh, Flex is kind of dying, so, so a lot of people who are in the Flex community are looking for new, new, new things to do. Uh, the other thing is that they're they're getting uh, well. You need to if you need to switch from Flex or Flash, you most likely need to code in JavaScript. And I know that there's a lot of people who don't like that. But because I'm not getting animations, so uh, uh, like because I think it's partially uh, true that we have so many better languages right now. I mean, better when it comes to structure and when it comes to what you can do with them, uh, and we still teaching people JavaScript, and we're still using JavaScript and, and, and coding JavaScript. And it's not a bad thing, but it, we probably could be better than it, for example, we have. Um, so I was going to talk to the one in the early morning, so I decided that uh, the marketing may be good, because everyone loves that. And I'm sorry about some, anyone who knows anything about marketing, I've I read like two books to, to get this ready, so I know almost nothing. Um, but this is, I think one of the theories that might kind of explain why we're not getting a lot of developers on hacks. Uh, because uh, the marketing people, they were trying to sell like innovative products for a long time, and it's not the first time that uh, this, this happens. And uh, uh, they divided the, like, the market into, into some groups, and like the innovators and the adopters and the majority and some other people that I'm not going to talk about. Uh, and I think it might help uh, to figure out who, who's who in here and uh, how you can get the different groups to uh, hook some hacks. Uh, so the first part is innovators. So like, classically, the first people to adopt a new technology are those who appreciate it for, for its own sake. So uh, we, I think we got that covered in, in, in the hack community. Like everybody was not sitting like this guy sitting there. And, and, uh, uh, and, and, and we get that covered. So, so this group is, is really good with hacks. You can, you can really get people who are innovative and uh, and, um, and who like hacks and, and can do work with hacks uh, a lot. Uh, then you have the early adopters, and um, these are the people who are starting to use the technology for, for selling products. So we, you know we have we have those who are doing games and uh, doing the, the TV stuff, and, and that's really it's not only about the technology; it's also about making sure it's itself the client and they are quite sure that it, uh, they can um, they can use it. So I think we kind of have this group covered too. Um, but then there's um, the there's early majority of pragmatists. And what the marketing book said that uh, these are the people who are uh, the beginning of the uh, massive market. So if you, if you want to go massive, you have to get to, to these people because uh, they are the majority of, of who's, who's using languages, who's using technology. Uh, and there are a few things that, uh, that make them quite distinct. So uh, they're not really buying the technology, they're buying everything that's around it. So um, they buy it for a long time because they just invest their company into that and they might not have uh, a way to change from that in, in the next year, so, so it's a big decision for them. Um, and so uh, I was uh, doing some, some test teaching of hacks, and uh, one of the things that I found out that, that these people usually to get to a new technology when starting a new project. So they need a new project, and they need to find out uh, what, what can they use for it. And uh, if they look at like a HTML5, they have like all these choices to, 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 to pick. So, so what they do is they have like two hours or three hours to, to browse the technologies and, and they can spend like two or three hours uh, at one. And if they get started on it and they can find something on the net and it just starts to work, it gets to the next round of, of picking technology. But it, if it doesn't, it's, uh, it's just the end. So, so it's really important to get uh, to, to make it very easy for them to, to, to get started on, on, 
And I'm not going to talk about the rest of, of, of the feature there because uh, the theory is that you have to use the um, the people from the from the early part to, to get the people from the next. So if we have the innovators and early adopters, and we can target the, those people, the other majority, who are kind of looking to, for new technologies, but now we're not very conservative, but are also not going to to try it out. So if we take like this. I think it's a good metaphor, like, uh, you know, this is like time travel and adventure, but if you look at this from, uh, from a perspective of a person who's on the street, it's like a crazy movie, some guy with a car who's, who's trying to get time travel, and, and this guy's okay with that, <laughs> but that doesn't, look, <laughs> but that doesn't look like a good idea <laughs> if, you, if you have someone from the street. So, so we probably, we're fine with coming to adventurous people, but, but it's a bit harder when it comes to uh, people who are less, more conservative. And also part of the theory is that uh, between the early market and the, the mainstream market, there's a, it doesn't just, just go, go, uh, go easily, but like there's a break between them. And you have to, to, if you want the technology to go to the mainstream market, you have to make a jump and okay, do a lot of work that, but that continues. You have to. You have to it's very, very, very different. Um, so, um, listen. I, I've been doing some some test teaching of hack. So I could. I, I really got to, to stand around people who were getting to reach hack for the first time and stand up on their shoulder. Uh, and uh, I get some notes on what what they find. Um, uh, what, what what kind of trouble they find uh, with hack at first contact. So. One of the first things is, uh, can, can I do the full screen? Because I just have to layer. Yeah. Will it work? Yeah. Oh, wait. So if, yeah. I, if I do this, can, can, will it work? Oh, okay, because I will show. Okay, you can, you can. No okay, because I, I have the layers. Right, so uh, the first thing I did was, uh, they, they found the dynamic somewhere in the code. And they asked, well, what is dynamic? And went to the API, looked at the documentation, and it says dynamic, uh, it has special behavior. And, <laughs> <laughs> and see the hack language reference for more information, and they're in the API documentation. So what they did is they looked at the top and they searched for dynamic, in, you know, in the, in, the, in the hack website. What they got was this. <laughs> the first one text API, and then this one, this one data. And uh, well, luckily, if you Google it, you can you can you can get uh, you can get the the good website where it says what dynamic is. But it's kind of a deal breaker when you can't find documentation about you know about classes that are quite basic. It's really quite hard to say people, yeah, this is like a great language and it's well maintained. Well, when you can can find uh, something like that. Um, well, and I've been talking like with different people about how to how to make different documentation. That I'm going to ask you at the end to like, maybe not question the kind of ideas. Uh, but uh, I, I found myself through creating this presentation. I, I, I did the slides and I'm quite happy with them. And I said, ah, ha, ha. I pointed out that there's no link to the main the dynamic page uh, that should be there. And then five minutes later, I'm thinking, I should add it. I, it's a wiki. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. I, right now, there's a link. But, but this is, I think, part of the problem that we kind of all, all, all of us sitting here are doing our project and we can really busy with that. And no one, uh, and it's hard to keep, think about uh, just, just making a video for people who are, um, well, who are in a different position because, because they, they don't just are. And uh, I, I told you that this is going to happen. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is like a, from Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I really love, I really love your product and using it uh, every day, but it, 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 I agree, there's obvious lack of documentation, <laughs> but I did not write it, uh, and I, I'm not writing any documentation for you right now, so I'm also to blame. Uh, but I also have an example from the code, which is, uh, which is also uh, a bit of a different thing, uh, which means while we can get documentation to, to be there, there's also a problem with get, making sure it's, it's um, it's up to date because uh, here's something that uh, I found documentation in your code, and I was like really, really happy <laughs> until I found out that, that, the, that the params are not there anymore. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so I, I and, and I think documentation is one of the big things that, that we, we're missing. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, so it's really 
enough public shaming. Uh, it's not a big problem. I mean, for all of us, uh, and uh, that, 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 that to be to be clear, it will cause the very really nice to read. So that's not. It's not like spaghetti code uh, where it goes through you know, pages and pages and pages, you can read it, but you still need to read the code. So if someone just comes in and wants to use it, it's not that easy. And, uh, well, we, we could probably do better as a community for making, uh, you know, like if someone needs to do, use something very fast, it, it might help to, to create some, uh, some documentation. Uh, the other thing is, uh, and this is part of my, my problem, that uh, versioning is, is, is quite hard to keep versions of, of types intact, with, uh, especially if you're using JavaScript. Because the JavaScript are also, people are also kind of working on those libraries. And it's not a problem with jQuery where, where this kind of, it's getting maintained, but if you go to, um, even to Hex.js, I think, and any or one of the other libraries, if you download it right now, well, you obviously need to import the JavaScript code, and then you go to any website and download the newest library, and then you find out if you've actually that uh, they don't have much. So like the Hexlib uh, version is for about 1.5 or something like that, and the new version of the website, which they promote because the, the new version, uh, is 2.0. So you then have to kind of, kind of um, work with this and, and get 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 that started, and it's also also not not, not very that's very easy. Uh, one of the things I think we could kind of use uh, as a rule is, is sometimes, um, especially for libraries that are really changing quite fast. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm really using the library, that's like the uh, uh, it, 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 You know, we're always, uh, uh, most tutorials, you just get use relief and, and don't, don't specify the version. And, uh, and it's okay, unless you're, you're kind of leaving the, the demo running on... on uh, you leave the demo for people to download and, and then try out, because they, they download the demo, they try to run it out, and they get the new libraries, and, and it just doesn't work. And it leaves a bad impression. And again, it's not something that, that, that's a pr real problem. I mean, you know, I mean, look for, for the programming point of view, this is like minor, minor things, and it's not really important. Uh, but there are, so... So yeah, uh, so these are really small, small things. Um, but I'm talking about this because uh, I was teaching Flex a lot, and the switch from Flex 3 to Flex 4, I think, like the te technically uh, speaking, it was like a really good thing what they did, adding the new classes and and stuff like that. But uh, when I get people on the training, uh, the difference between teaching Flex 3, which was quite good and uh, it was organized and, and well, you know, and quite simple. To flex forward, where you get two sets of components. So you get, I, I don't know, probably some people do do code, but uh, like, so like you had like one set of components, uh, Spark and one which are MX, and they kind of, uh, sorry, Python. yeah, the Python. I mean, there's like label for this, label for that, uh, and you, and you. You get errors like you try to do as a child, and all quest people try to do at always because it just it makes sense. But when you're using the one set of components, it doesn't work. And um, this is my favorite bug, which uh, it's not a bug, it's a feature uh, that uh, you, you have two ways of embedding fonts in, in Flex 4. Uh, and alerts are MX3, so they don't use fonts embedded for uh, Spark components. And you can call the application for like four hours. And have all the fonts, and then you show an alert, and it's always empty because it, it doesn't have the font you, you need. Um, so I'm talking about this for some reason. Um, all right. Uh, uh, the reason is that, uh, as I said, I think it technically, like when it comes to the technical uh, stuff, it, it was a good move. Like it, it was a move forward, and it was really nice that they kept the, the old stuff in Flex because all the code was working. Uh, but when someone was starting, just starting to do flex then, it was just making no sense to them. They, they would come, you know, come to the training and, and discuss why, why am I using add elements for this component and add child for 90% of the other components. And in a maximum, they look the same. So, um, so right, but that's the title. Uh, so what, what I mean is, if we want to get more people hooked on time, and, uh, right now, we have to kind of treat them like 
latecomers. The people who, who, who probably will feel much, uh, much of the stuff that's plain and easy and, and seems very natural to, to people who use hack, uh, something that might be really bizarre. Like, I don't, I don't really have any examples from hack. It's much harder than flag uh, to, to find bizarre stuff, of it. but but it is it is uh, a bit strange. Um, right, um, I'm kind of you know, overlay with the talk from yesterday a, a bit, but um, I didn't want to just say bad things about hack <laughs> right in front of you. Uh, so so I, I've talked with them also about why 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 did they find it cool, and I try to find things that are not not really obvious. Um, so, all right. Uh, one of the things that I got asked a lot, uh, a lot was, um, what, how can you quit hack when this was started? And uh, you know, the obvious answer is we probably not going to do that. You know, it's like heroin, but that's not a really great answer that you're not going to stop using it. Uh, so, so, so this is one of the things that I, I find is quite um, quite calming to the to the people who who, who start hack that. Well, just in case you don't like it, you can always like, take your code uh, and uh, you know, and just use PHP or JavaScript or something, something like that, and and and, and you and you can still still use that code. It, it might not be great, but um, but you still can. Um, this is a, a hard thing to to, to explain, and. Um, because uh, when people hear that it's something that's cross platform and you can write it once and run it, where they, they kind of start thinking about uh, one of the few things that, that they've heard before. So, uh, well, first of all, they heard it before. So, so it's not the first time that someone's saying that. But uh, people usually think about stuff like Java. And I think Java is a bit like this when you, when you, when you think about it as a tool. When it does everything everywhere and uh, it just shouldn't. I mean, it, you know, it, it's just really hard to, to get to the experience of the Java on desktop and, um, and, and get everything uh, the same way. So I found that it's quite nice to, to explain it like this. It, it doesn't do everything everywhere, but it does a lot of stuff everywhere, and uh, and you can do everything with it on top of you know on each platform. So in the sense that, that you you have to, to kind of treat each platform separately, but you Get the core that that, uh, that obviously is, is cross platform. Mm. Well, you, you've been talking about this yesterday, but you don't need to switch, and it, it's really, really important for most companies that they don't really need to switch to hack. They can try it out on some small part of their project, uh, and and it will work okay, and uh, that's that's fine. Um, that's just great for me. And this is something that that. Uh, as I said, I, I'm, I'm thinking about developers and people who are starting to learn hacks, and this is really important for, for people that, uh, they, that you have a community that you feel welcome in, and that's very active and uh, kind of cool. I mean, that, that, but that's the, the vibe that hacks had. Uh, you know, first of all, because of the name, it, it probably makes it harder to sell uh, to, to, to companies that it's hacked, but uh, when it comes to giving to developers, it sounds really cool. It has an X in it. So, um, so this is like uh, pointing them out to the website and to like Top Overflow and, and the Google Groups really really helps because you, you can see that the talks there are like really rapid. So you just you can have posts that are you know minutes apart, and not not days. So it's really nice. Um, right. Uh, this is but I really think hack shines in. Uh, I have for that I hope to get started. Um, and I think it really shows where we hack is really nice. Uh, GIS, I don't know, if you know, uh, this like a whole system of map map information uh, about the world that like huge uh, government organizations usually keep, and they have their own standard, uh, which is quite complex API because there's a lot of versions, a lot of stuff, and most of it is the complexity is not even the, the UI, which it makes uh, makes it a really good target for hack because. Uh, you can kind of write almost everything up to displaying it in hack. And uh, if I can, can get my, my the, the client to do this, I, I think it might be like a really, really good thing. Uh, and it's the perfect fit for, for, for hack. Uh, 
and all the algorithms they have for like to recalculating uh, coordinate systems because I don't know this might be interesting. Uh, they use stuff like this to to, to map the world, so it's, it's not like really even simple stuff. They, they have like really complex algorithms uh, that they tend to rewrite every like a year because they <coughs> have an app in Java that needs to translate coordinate from one system to the other, so they write it in Java and it's like two pages long. It's not a huge thing, but then they need to do it in uh, in the browser in the JavaScript. So they need to rewrite it in JavaScript, and then they go to Flash, and they have like a small Flash application that needs to calculate something, uh, and they need to rewrite it in, in ActionScript. So uh, when, whenever you have uh, stuff that, that is kind of like algorithmic, it, it hacks is like hacks is really nice, and and, uh, and you can reuse it to uh, to to write it something on the server side, and then move it to, to the client side, which, which is also really uh, really nice. Uh, okay. So this is something that I was amazed that uh, ActionScript developer, well, this was, was one ActionScript developer, but he was telling me that he has a problem that he knows ActionScript, and he can't code any tools for himself because it runs in the browser, I mean, in, the, in the flash player. He could create an error application, but that's not, not something that, that's really nice. And, and this is, uh, I, I haven't thought about this before, talking with him, that you can. Uh, you can write command line tools uh, knowing hacks, while well, you can't do that using ActionScript, and uh, more or less. Uh, it's something that, that, you know, as a programmer, it's quite, quite nice to, be, uh, to do that. Uh, and also that you can write JavaScript code, which is uh, quite obvious. Um, for Flex developers, uh, hacks, uh, just to start getting different, different groups. Uh, for Flex developers, hacks is really nice to learn new stuff, so, because Flex makes it really, I, I don't know from my, my, my experience, but Flex makes it really lazy because it does everything for you. Uh, and uh, it's quite, I mean, it made the transition for me using hacks to using BigQuery and stuff like that really, really easy because I got post completion and it was checking my errors and stuff like that. And it's also really nice to creating the server side code. So if you're a Flex developer and you need to move to something, uh, you can choose some technologies, but if you choose hacks, you can also create PHP code or stuff like that. So you can kind of create whole applications without any any issues. Um, yeah, for PHP, it's, uh, it's obviously complex and error-checking. Uh, and one other thing is that, that you can kind of uh, create forms that are being checked on the server side. Obviously, it's really easy to do but it's also very easy to move it to the, to the client side. So you don't need to rewrite. That which happens a lot, if you, if you, want, to, if you want to have that. Uh, right. And so, so the idea is how we can, uh, how can we, how can we go for that gap between the, the like the niche market where we are and, and the main market. And this is again from marketing books, but they have a cunning plan usually uh, to kind of attack niches. So, so they find uh, like a little area that, that might uh, prove the technology useful, and I think that's happening with uh, MMA and games in, in hard. This is like this is the area that if you if you search the internet, you can find a lot of people using hacks in there, uh, and, um, and and it's a proven technology in that area. And uh, what they use the marketing usually does is they just take one after the others to 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 get the, like the whole thing covered. Uh, and I think it's quite good for us too, because um, as, I, as far as, I, uh, as as much as I would like to see documentation for everything, that's not going to happen. Uh, we're not going to write the documentation because uh, no one likes writing it, and we're not alone in it. Uh, because uh, there was a talk in my hometown for by Beyond Sosu uh, two weeks ago, and someone asked him, "What when will the new C++ will be ready?" And he said, "Oh, you know." Uh, we're all developers, we like to write code, we don't like to write books about code. So I'm, it's probably by the end of the year, but I can't promise. So it's like everyone's doing this, There's no one likes to write documentation. Um, but the idea of documenting little parts of it uh, to make it useful for someone might be, uh, I think, might be a good way to do it. To do it because uh, then someone can, for example, someone can start doing games and um, I might, I'm not going to promise this, but I might start documenting your prompt because I really like it, uh, and I think it, it might be really useful for people 
starting creating web pages with, with, uh, with uh, hacks. Because it, it just makes a lot of stuff very, very, very uh, easy. I think, for, 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 at least from my perspective, uh, doing that with uh, JavaScript is a bit hard because, as I said, there's, there's, very, there's a lot of differences uh, between uh, libraries and different versions are changing very quickly. And, um, and I'm even having some, some problems because JavaScript is very, uh, you can do a lot of stuff with JavaScript that's really weird and it's even hard to write extensions and stuff. Um, right, uh, so this is almost the last slide. As I said, I'm planning to start teaching types uh, for real. Uh, and this is also the, something that I found that it is quite hard to teach these hacks uh, as a whole. So if you get three days to teach someone hacks, you really have to pick a flavor of, of, of hacks. So you, you can't really decide, I'm going to show you how to make games and create websites and do Flash and C++, because that's, that's just not, not, not possible in three days. So, uh, so I also think that the, that the idea that we can get people started on, on one, one thing or the other is really nice. Um, right, so so, <laughs> so so the idea is I really think that, that uh, I think one of the best things that can happen to program, especially one like me that's kind of lazy and uh, doesn't want to learn a lot of languages uh, and, and switch them every every time. Uh, so I, I, re I really feel like this is a good language for choice, but uh, it would be really nice if we could figure out a way to, to share it with people who kind of like don't have time or, or the skills to, to, to spend on, on getting to know it, and it might be really useful. So uh, I know there's usually should be questions, but uh, I've talked with people here, and if anyone has any ideas, there was like I, I can just summarize the talk, like there were ideas of gamification of documentation, so that you get points for writing documentation and, and all the different stuff. But um, I can promise that I, I will try to, to finish uh, a project that will just show basic usage of how we just started. Uh, but it would be really nice if, you know, if we, we could kind of as a community get, but just sometimes think about those people who are not, not in the community right now, but might want to come here and, and help them. Um, and, and I, I personally think that documentation is one of the key things that are, that are missing the hash community. And that's all. Oh, and like a nice picture of sharing for you. <laughs> uh, No, no, 
it's a, I mean, you can find it on Google, but it doesn't matter. But it's a bit, I can't tell if it's included. It was. Yeah. Um, okay, so I guess really granular examples as well, you know, I think, like really small, like, and how we organize that. Because there's obviously a lot of them, and they should be different platforms, different contexts. Yeah, I, I kind of started probably with this uh, really, um, I, I should kind of finish that, but I started writing, uh, because, you know, it, it's easier for me because I'm going to use it when teaching, so I have a lot like, uh, motivation uh, to just write, you know, I, I, this for like Lambda, right? And I, I, I created like a small server to, to do the, the, put the traces in the code. Um, you just you know take array and just go function by function and just create simple 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 use cases and, and once I'm done I think I'm going to send it to to you or someone so we can maybe link it to to, to, to the documentation so that you know you just get error like lambda or something and you press press the button and you have a synth like the synthesis uh, thing you can do with it and yeah I think I think it's, it's that 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 should be something because um, it's also important that we've been talking with someone yesterday that to have like really fun examples. So some examples that you can you know show that what hacks can do because the basic ones they don't really show anything. Uh, but yeah, but you I, I think you need just just all the levels to to, to, to show what, what you can do with and just just in, you know just to make it easier for people not, not to have to stop and read the documentation or search Google or use the form for half an hour. That's just quite a simple thing because they they get brain parts or something like that. You know, the simple, yeah, just something like that. Yeah? So, um, I think convincing programmers is one thing, but the fact is that a lot of programmers are like employees, not necessarily freelancers, and they don't have a choice of actually um, what language they're going to use or what technology they're told, okay, we're going to use this, and that's it. And so, what often happens, like, what I've seen around talking with people is that there's a lot of people who use hacks like after hours for their hobby projects or the, but their day job is doing something more mundane and money making like Java. And uh, so uh, the peak would be actually is not, I think it you're just uh, comes back to what was being said yesterday uh, is not to convince the programming, to convince the boss. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's. Uh, it's, it's we could build yeah. yeah, but it's both, uh, yeah, it's probably just as important. I mean, it, it's probably more important to convince the bosses, like, uh, if you want to, to, to use them. Uh, them. But uh, I'm working with, for, for a few years, with companies that are like really small, so like five, to, let's say 20 people. Uh, and in, in, in that case, um, they usually have to ask the developers, you know, what's a good tool, and uh, and and they have to, like, for example, with flags, they, everyone is now looking for something new to, to, to choose to, to, to use, and you know, it's probably going to be HTML5, but what you're going to use to, to build HTML5 website is kind of uh, your choice. Uh, but at the same time, I think uh, that's why having like a solid community, solid foundation, uh, and, and everything in place is important. That. Uh, I still think a lot of people, while they use hacks in their own projects, uh, might be a bit worried to look at their bosses and say, all right, let's move to hacks and all oh, 10 of us you know, learn hacks and create a big project in it. Because it's, it's um, a much bigger risk. I, I, I think, uh, so, like, for example, the first hack project I did was with the idea that, okay, they are small, if it all goes to hell, I can just rewrite them in PHP. So, so, you know, and that's kind of a statement that, that you can get if you're doing something small, but if you do it to your boss, uh, if, if he asks you, even if you use hacks at home, it might still not be enough to to, 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 to allow you to say to your people, you know, oh yeah, I think you're supposed to do a deal of the company moving to, to hacks. So yeah, but I, I, yeah, it's obviously, it has to go both ways. Yeah, uh, the website is a huge improvement, by the way. Uh, yeah. I tried sending hacks The old website was a really hard sell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. The new one is really great.
Yeah. Also so how can you let him out run it and instant satisfaction? And you think, wow, this thing this, this works. So well, yeah, Slack is really, really nice to I mean Slack is really <coughs> easy to get people hooked on. Um, one, one thing is the but that's getting much better. I mean, that's getting better like every week. I mean, if you check, check the tweet. Uh, but the other thing is I remember a case when Slack was uh, suddenly, but you know, that was Adobe, they were just paying people to do that. But there were Adobe people everywhere, it was just on blogs, on Slack overflow, that they were just writing writing about Slack everywhere. And it's like a bit annoying, but you could get help and, and documentation of everything. Uh, but yes, the tooling I think is, is not that. I mean, it's, it's getting much, much better. I, uh, but the, the, yeah, a year ago we've got, we've got a problem again now in terms of. Uh, I mean, I want to check out the IntelliJ plugin because I'm you know, uh, using the Flex plugin at the moment, and IntelliJ is quite good. I mean, it's, it's not the best version, um, but the problem with that is it's, it's still fine. So you can use that plugin in the in the sort of premium version, or am I wrong on that? I don't mean, even kind of do it.